1245, the fourth day of the RC3 2021, and I welcome you to the next talk. The next talk will be interesting. We have two guests. We have Gulliver and Mutashchu, and both are <coughs> have the first talk on the Congress, it's, but it's a not new subject. Things that take long uh, will finally be good. And 34 C3, the hacker EG was started the hacker co op, uh, but it was now realized. And today we are going to hear about how how corporate companies are rethought and what is done already. Uh, again, some, some housekeeping, you might remember it. You can ask your questions in different channels, IRC, Twitter, Mastodon, and so on and forth. We collect that, I can get a pet here, and in the end we can talk about it. This talk is also translated here, so if and we also say hello from the translation booth. We are uh, B and me, Franz T. And Good. Um, welcome. Yeah, I glaub, dann ich sagen, so ich freu so mich, we are um, here. Euch und wir sind Thank you for being here. And uh, tell us everything about the WTF, the World Cooperative of uh, uh, te Friends of Technologies. So tell, tell us what. Okay. Yeah. Um, hello, I'm Mr. Shitsu, and we want to give you a short introduction about cooperatives or co uh, Why is there a hacker co op and what can we hack about with it or uh, achieve using it? Specific, more specifically, the VTF is founded now. Uh, part of the general introduction is what you can do with a co-op. So first of all, who are we? Um, Gulliver. Hi, I'm Gulliver. I'm one of the uh, CTOs, roughly, of the BTF corporate. I'm uh, yeah, management of the co-op. I'm software developer, a freelancer, and for for cash machines or ATMs, and I stumbled over the hacker co-op or, or hacker EG. EG is the German word for co-op. And back to Mr. Shizu. Yes, I'm Mr. Shizu. Um, I'm uh, working for 20 years in the area of IT, and I did a lot of different things. And I, I liked the idea, and was fascinated by the idea of a hacker co-op. And I was always missing people who took me by the hand and showed me what is all what all is possible. And I paid a lot of time to learn that and a lot of money to learn it and we hope that that's an end or that leads to an end of the of those issues for all those young hackers who for whom we want to create a base to get started in the world of business and the co-op is a great idea and why um, that's something we will talk about now first of all um, small introduction what is a co-op in itself um, it's a German or European uh, form of a company. It's a very old form of a company for several centuries already. And in difference to, uh, and to, to, to most other forms is that where, where where there is an owner or a group of owners, the co-op aims to be to work together. For example, the Herr Reifeisen, you might know him in Germany because there is a 
uh, Raiffeisen Bank and, and these, these co-ops started by the uh, with the hope that you can achieve more together than alone. This, the main aim of a co-op is not to make money, but rather to to help the business of its members. So a normal company or uh, tries to become as to get as much money and make as much profit as possible, but a co-op wants to co connect its members. There are two modes of a co-op. Usually the we have a, a club and a company together and bo both are within one organization it's there is a, a company and in, in addition to that we have all the advantages of a, of of a company or a regular company and the, in addition everybody has the same rights we don't have parts of the company and the the voting rights depend on how many uh, pa parts everybody owns but in with the co-op everybody can buy a certain number of shares but uh, for every vote everybody has the same number of votes and exactly one that way we have a discussion because there is nobody who can just override everything and that's the advantage of a co-op. And co-ops are, uh, are hidden champions. You might, you probably already know some co-ops, whether it's Edeka, which is a co-op in the buying, and uh, there are a lot of different structures that are based on this rule. We have different farmers who work together in, in, in a corporation and it's a well-known method, uh, especially with building co-ops. We have a building where many people live and nobody can go there and just override everything because he owns two flats rather than those who only own one flat. And that's where the co-op is a great form because everybody just has one vote. For those who uh, are more interested in, in, in uh, ecological, we have DATEV, which is the organization that assimilates everything in, in, in text questions. And it's a co-op, even if it tries to look like a normal company. And even in Germany, there are long, large, large corporations. The work cooperative of Technic Friends we founded is a as a one-year-old organization, we have around 200 members, but we'll talk about that later. So, what are the advantages of a co-op? We want to advance the interests of our members. That's the main aim. We want to protect the, the shares and we want to advance the interests of all members. And that's an interesting base discussion because all members means all members, even those who just joined the co-op to have, have uh, idealistic support. Every member in the main meeting has one vote, and the up, most upper organ of the co-op is the Generalversammlung, and they elect a number of green of, of, of sub-organizations. And there we need a three-quarter vote of all members and it's very hard to for for small groups to tear apart the co-op and that's a foundation in the law that a compromise is needed to advance and those structures also make it hard for other companies to just buy the co-op or that uh, a lot of people move away. That's something that, that that's hard to do. The co-op still exists and you can always... Uh, and, 
die die Genossenschaft dann macht. Can, can participate in the decisions on how the co-op continues and moves ahead. And that's where we are still finding our own rules. We have a general direction we want to move, but how to realize everything, that's something we will discuss next year. As a member of the COOP, you have the opportunity, because we, we wrote it in the bits you are only financially responsible with the amount of money you paid in, and that's just 100 euros in the COOP. There is no requirement to uh, collect further monies due to liabilities. And also, um, it has the same tax rights as normal comp companies, so the same taxes need to be paid. For example, the co-op is required to pay that, but that also, but also the most bankruptcy secure form, because everything is so limited and controlled through the central agency, it's hard to really go bankrupt. It's, it's very secure against bankruptcies. Yeah, why would I want to co-op as a hacker? Maybe we already know it from a living co-op or housing co-op. So as a hacker, if I want to do business and projects, first of all, I want a capital company or corporation. So if I start selling things in my Etsy shop, then I am a UG of the German law and I have a problem with liability because I am um, I have to I have liability with all my private property and that's a problem and as a hacker if you have contact to customers especially business customers you really want to have a company or are a company. You want to be a company. And in Germany, that is the um, Unternehmergesellschaft. It's a very small version of a GmbH. That's the German version of a lim li limited liability company, LLC, in the English speaking countries. And it does cost something to found one. So if you just want to do a small project, you already have to pay this. Just a contract to create this company. And it has to be notarized. And you have to sign it at a notary. It has to be publicized in this. Uh, it has to be publicized in the commercial register. It has to be officialized with the financial offices. So all in all, it's 1,000. 1,000 to almost 2,000 euros in costs, and then nothing, no work done yet. No financial work, no taxes, no nothing. So bookkeeping has to be done after certain rules. That's about 130 euros per month. And the end of year taxing or the, the work on the taxes of the tax office, that's about 3,000 years per year. So this framework is quite big already and if I just have a t-shirt shop and want to sell merch, merchandise, so I really have to calculate if these investors, uh, if, the, if this investing is paying for itself and of course it needs certain skills as well. You need to know certain tricks how to move around as a company but alone, on your own, it's a lot. And that's where this co-op comes into play. Because it's a place or a construction where we have done all of this already. So you can focus on your business. You don't have to deal with a, a tax attorney or any notary or anything at all. So you can just profit of the services. And that's why we decided, for structural reasons, to create a co-op. 
Hacker EG zu gründen. Um, so we created the Hacker EG. So the Hacker Corp. So you can start quickly with your topic and don't have all this bureaucracy. I call it the paper world in Germany and it's really annoying. I know from personal experience. So you have a great business idea. After two weeks of reading all the laws and the frameworks that everything is not that simple, after two weeks usually you are too annoyed to do anything. And so here the co-op handled all of this and almost immediately you can get started with your topic. Before we could found it, we had to prepare a few things, of course. So there was the FIBIT club. You probably heard of it before. This club is something like a funnel for the co-op. It collected all the interested parties that wanted to become members, collected the money for the co-op, for the foundation of the co-op, and did all the preparations because also creating a co-op needs money and everything that was mentioned for the uh, LLC also has to be done here. So it has to be registered, we have to create a lot of paper for it. And to be able to do all this, we created the Febit. And you could just enter it and say, I want to have this many shares. And then we started. And in December 2020, we had the meeting for the foundation of our core. The Febit is right now in liquidation. It did its job. And as its own um, judicial entity, it's now in liquidation and everything else will be done by the co-op. So founding the co foundation of co-op was on the 5th of December 2020 and there were three founding members. You need three members to found a co-op. And so this was our first official meeting and then on the 13th, 1st of 21, it was registered with the co-op register. Here is the number, 1113 is our official ID and since then we can do work. So you see, December, in December of course nothing happened and still the financial officials in Germany wanted want a declaration for 2020 and we are registered in Hamburg and they really want the declaration. So in the beginning we had zero euro and an end of year declaration with zero euros. And but still a tax official has to sign off on that. There were WTF facts, so the core of facts. The year is not really over yet, so we can't have the full numbers, but we have a preview. So within the year we achieved around 200 members, 200 hackers said, yeah, I want to participate. I like the idea or yes, I want to use you for my project. And some want to mig wanted to migrate the company into our co-op. 200 people, I think that's a lot already. And we managed to have around 100k of uh, money or sales or turnover. I think the numbers are quite nice and from our talks we know and we are talking a lot with other co-ops and people who are interested. So you hear again and again that the topic IT and very capable people, we want to do something, but our co-op is very well off in that regard. Uh, so there are two 
ist quasi das Layers of Management, das sozusagen alles beobachtet und die Richtigkeit des Wirtschaftens feststellt. Der wohl auch so we have the Directorate, so uh, the Supervisory Board, and then there's the Management. Management are those who are able to sign contracts and who are liable if something goes wrong. And Supervisory Board and Management both are volunteers. So we have a few people who get paid in the office. So we have a little staff and the office has to be staffed. That's the center point that collects the money, it writes the mail, it accepts mail, it provides certain services. Bookkeeping, all this happens in the office. And the WTF pays their staff considerably above the base uh, minimal wage, even the new one. And yeah, we are also paying a bonus for the holidays. So this is basically a machine room where also most of the tickets arrive and that can't be done by volunteers. Because everyone on the management and supervisory board, they have day jobs and they cannot provide a service level for anyone. There is an organigram. So how is everything organized? Gulliver will talk about this because it's his topic. Yeah, we created that at some point to have an overview who you have to talk to. So the th first three layers are dictated by law. The general congregation elects a supervisory board and they supervise the management and super uh, and they uh, and the management is liable then of course and below that we have the office and below that we have a few teams then we have a podcast there's a working group business cases and that's the people who take care of all business contacts. If someone wants to do a business deal, they advise and talk about this. Then onboarding, that's for onboarding of new members, of course. Working group um, Einkauf, which is German for buying. That's something that we apparently don't really need, people who buy stuff. And then working group development, they supervise all the internal projects, but maybe a small point about this flow. We wanted to have a lot of works organized in um, uh, yeah, we wanted to have a lot of meetings in video calls, but also digital communication, because digital communication alone might lead to miscommunications. So we wanted to have a lot of work organized in committees. And the email address is in here. That's also something we created early on. We had a ticket system, so you could send in your questions and inquiries to these addresses and there's a ticket system for ordering all inquiries and requests. There are a few internal projects. I'll start with the COLA system. So the problem that we have is that we have people with single people with their problem uh, with their projects, and they have to have bookkeeping, 
So we have to list all the money that came in and all the money that went out. And in more complex cases, we have projects where several people work together. So for that, I need more complex bookkeeping. And whatever you want to call it, but we have to handle the bills. And with the Kohle system, we want to handle this. The second project, the name Competence Inventory. One of the problems in our first year was we don't know what we have. We have 200 members, but we have no idea what do they are they able to do and what do they want to do. So people sat down and created a small web interface where people could enter their skills, their will to invest time and yeah they could enter that as a member and this inventory is visible to all members and searchable for all members. Originally the idea was that someone said we need a marketplace for freelancers. Well, we'll have to see. What are our people able to do anyway? Yeah, third running project. At the beginning of the first year, or in the middle of the first year, we noticed we have to write things down. We stole the idea basically to document everything using things in combination with Markdown. It's a good solution to create documentation, technical documentation mostly. And now we have a manual that all members can access where all the services of our co-op are accessible and how they are accessible. How can I use the continuous in integration system? How can I, I don't know, how can I get money out of the co-op? What do I have to do when I enter? Uh, it's a project that's still being started. Oh yeah, the project that's being still built up is payment aggregation for everyone. What is that? Well, it's aggregating small donations, Patreon, whatever. And to aggregate all these small amounts, tax them properly and hand it out to the people who deserve it. And that's what we mean with payment aggregation. I think it's an early stage as of now. Yeah, so far for the running projects. Markus, I give back to you the learnings. Yeah, the learnings, exactly. For payment aggregation, uh, maybe I can say something about that. You, we can notice or we can talk about why a co-op is necessary. Each of you who wanted to appropriately use a shop or the internet to offer services or things that you have the problem with the payment manager. You can quickly buy, create a PayPal account, but if you create any turnover, all the annoying things start and you suddenly need to get verified. And with the payment uh, uh, aggregation is that we want to ensure that our customer can pay with any reasonable payment method on this world because we don't care where the money comes from. We care that it gets to the person who offers a product or service. And as a small company, I have a, or as a single person, I have the problem because I have to write contracts with all payment providers. And if I want to accept credit cards, I have to take care of that. And with the 
companies who do credit card payments. I have to verify that my bank account is allowed to do all the information to create the the receipts. I have to write the receipts. I have to send the receipts. And you perhaps remember that from gastronomy, where we have a requirement to have the signatures on the that that are all things that happen on the internet. And to receive payments is something that's quite hard nowadays. And it's getting quite complicated. And as a co-op, we want to to collect all those. We um, they they you you ask the others to pay at the VTF cooperative, and then we look at the payments and. Um, uh, that way, not every member needs its own his own contract with PayPal and so on. For example, Patreon does something similar. They they also do what the VBIT does. They collect money for projects and pay it out, but they have significant fees that occur there, and we don't want to have, do that. And that's why we pay at the payment aggregation center subject. And that's um, something everybody who is on company, who, who, who has, uh, who wants to collect payments online is sees that that's a good, good thing or a helpful thing. No, what about the learnings? Um, the first important learning we had as a VTF is that money is important, but uh, we need money to move things, uh, but uh, shut up and take my money does not work all the time. Um, that was the first, what we noticed the first time up on founding, a lot of people say, hey, that's a great idea and I want to participate there and I just uh, buy a couple of shares, but then so it was easy to collect the money to have the base financing for the co-op itself. However, not that much that we can just buy all the business processes, for example, taxes or bookkeeping. We can't just hand that over to some other organization and we say, hey, we have so much money, that's not a problem. It's an internal subject. We have to be smart about it and we do have to need to do a lot ourselves and it's a, and it's not helpful to, to just add money on it because it's just draining away on the paper world the, with all the paper stuff. For example, data protection information, we discussed about it a lot and how on how we can realize that if we want to ensure it in all different directions it's a lot of it's a, it's a lot of work and you have to talk with different people and uh, every specific website information and so we need a pragmatic solution and in this situation we that's what we tried we got our members on board and uh, just throwing money at the problem is something that does not work because it needs to be done smartly. Something else we noticed, um, a lot of infrastructure work are helpful and if you want to start something like a cooperative and infrastructure that's not only or, or primarily to click an account at Hetzner but rather to, to think about how processes can be created or uh, realized. Um, Hacker all come from technology services. They always find an idea how to solve it with software, but that's not the process. And an, an idea was the selection of a ticket system. We we looked at two things, uh, Samat and Otobo, and we choose Otobo as a ticket system because it is able to do PGP and you can create great, great processes, you can modulate, but we have operated this ticket system for a long time. So first of all, the PGP 
uh, encryption is there, but not mm, the processes are missing. Missing. So not the technology is the issue, but the the infrastructural thinking about processes on how they can be created. Another example: the sign-up process of the cooperative. Um, you go to our website and say, hey, I want to become a member, and then uh, we have an introduction round, and we have a small talk with you, and if everything's fine, we you have to pay for some um, shares, and it's a snail mail process, and you send us a, a request, and in the beginning we had, we thought about how to realize that smartly, to ensure that we have as little paper sent around as possible, that our infrastructure work that needs to be done ahead of time, and you should should think about those if you want to become a company and be part of it. Another thing is to talk about expectation management, um, because we have a lot of talks here. Uh, there are a lot of ideas that were created in, in Vbit, or we, we discussed what what can happen and in, during the founding of the co-op we had no clear target we always said we want to realize as many of those ideas as possible but the get a lot of people who have expectations and some members had great expectations what a co-op can do and it's a super cheat for everything uh, to do with with the economy, but unfortunately that's not true because we have to, we are still in Germany and Germany is a paper tiger, so we have this discrepancy between the the expectations and the reality and that's something where I would take the understanding, if you create something like that, you need to have a minimalistic or the smallest first the first idea that you what you can realize as at first and if you look at it from top to bottom we have all these awesome ideas and awesome things we thought about and for example we build the hackers or buy by a ship to uh, uh, drive around the world on all those amazing idea we want to pr produce food and bake waffles and all those all those interesting ideas that were were discussed um, while talking about waffles that's an idea but then the health society came around if you want to do waffles you need certificates and uh, a lot of other things and at that point we have a great idea but in the end of the day everything slides by the way and we have to we have to ensure that you don't lose the motivation when everything slides down so the transforming of visions to reality is a, is a real challenge and that's, that leads to a couple of discussions on how that can be realized and why the reality is different and usually we have good reasons why these huge huge ideas cannot be realized so we also noticed, and it's also part of the nerds, every nerd has its own on, on speciality and is, is well learned in that we have a specific part and want to offer that as a service as, or as a product. And you need business know-how to do so. You need, you need to know uh, how do I write um, uh, the the uh, uh, bills and so on and we are lucky that this business know-how is something we has, we have people who have already knowledge about business structures that's something we cannot expect from all members and that's also something we learned because in many places there is the 
we, we are still lacking of the the, the knowledge of in, in these core subjects. And that's also something that where one or the other person is frustrated. Uh, so where people say, hey, I want to do this, and they say, oh, you can't do that because of reasons. And yeah, it's also that's also something that creates frustration. Um, to create create and realize your own projects within the uh, uh, co-op is, uh, is always a struggle or a long-term term goal. If you have a business idea and you come to us and we say, hey, here we have this awesome, awesome idea and I would like to sell it and we always discuss we, we discuss this about it on a, in a group and we discuss on how we can realize it in the paper world and how can we turn it around in such a way that it's a reasonable business case and we need to reflect about it. We have critical questions that need to be be answered and we get some, some discussion points we did not think about and that requires self-reflection and especially expert knowledge in a specific, specific uh, sector of IT, for example, it's quite hard if you're not the super expert, but want to move it into a, this, this and that leads to challenging situations and dis interesting discussions where somebody rage quits in, in Mumble, and that's also something that's part of it. And that's also something I noticed all the time, even if if a mumble rage quit happens and, uh, and somebody is a bit more, uses more powerful words, yeah, you get back together, even if some people are, no, uh, are annoyed by it not being quick enough. Um, the permission requiring, uh, for example, payment aggregation, um, it's something where money laundering law is uh, in included. Um, earlier, before there was a monopoly, they went and collected all the payments to the to, to those that deliver to them. They weren't allowed to do so because you mustn't accept payments on part of a third and if, uh, of a different person and you need to be, have a bank license and that's a difficulty you have again and again and, with, and we have to think about it with payment aggregation. Same with uh, food and health services. Um, the, the, there's just what instance that is uh, liable on a personal, on a personal manner and um, that's also an interesting subject. Yeah, I talked about this earlier, the topic of learnings, because I think that we just don't know. Things you don't know and don't know that you don't know are very problematic. If you, uh, that were very problematic when we founded the core. And we're still working on that. So what can you do with the, uh, with the co-op? We have a postal service, and an, um, so um, in Germany you have to provide your uh, address uh, in about us and legal details, and if you want to provide your own address, you can provide ours. Then creating invoices as, on a click is something we still work on, so invoice as a service or bills as a service. But we are also working on office things, so you can work with the co-op. When mail comes in, scanning that, the competence inventory, inventory. So if you are looking for people to do things for you, and then of course technical and technological infrastructure, next cloud, ticket system, a forum mailing lists, all of this should be possible to be done using the core. Then we will create a lot more services in the near future. And towards the end, 
Let me repeat what went well, so a few success stories. We founded a co-op in a zero-trust environment. A lot of people don't know each other, and because of COVID we couldn't change that. Everything was done remotely. The first real meeting was a few weeks ago. We built up an office that works. We had a general meeting with everyone in March. And there are members who had a complete migration of their own company into the co-op successfully. And now they have their business only in the co-op. And the Plus Me app, you might have seen it, it was part of the election. It also carries the co-op developer account and we did that inside the co-op. So what can be expected for 2022? Of course, we want to continue collecting competencies and see what our members are able to do. We want to see what projects already exist and how to propagate them to the outside. More business cases, of course, always more business and more selling and structures for selling. And of course, we want to talk directly talk to customers. Right now, we are focused on the members, but we don't have much content what customers can expect. And another thing we want to do is payment aggregation. Implement that properly, and but there are some hurdles still we have to take. If you are interested in becoming a member or want more information about the co-op, you can visit the website wtfeg.de. It's on screen. You can see the process, what could be done. And yeah, so far, from my side, thank you very much, the two of you. Thanks very much, Shizu and Gulliver. There are a few questions in the chat. I'm already sorting them a little. First, a big thank you and well done for all your hard work and that you not just wanted to do it, but started doing it properly. And some questions are more general and some are more concrete, more specific. If you agree, I'll just go through them. I'll have to sort them on the fly. Okay, one question was, do you also accept members from outside of Germany? Is that possible to take part? It is possible, and we had that just recently. The main problem from US, so members from the US are special, but otherwise within the EU it's no problem at all. And other countries except the US is not very difficult, but the US, there is the factor um, convention or agreement, a treaty. So with them it's more difficult, we are working on it. A general question to the co-op. If you get money, want to get money from, um, from banks, are you in a better or worse situation than a normal company? Well, in these cases, because the co-op cannot go bankrupt, other than maybe uh, an LLC that's limited in it, the liability, our co-op has a higher um, amount of money, so a higher common capital stock or share capital. So we are better off and there is even um, some help, some assistance and I would say it's more democratic. So we are better off than a classical capital company. 
auch bei der Diskussion, wenn es um Projekte und So there are grants and yeah, we are better off. And it, it's a good form of company. What can be added to this? Was man vielleicht noch erwähnen sollte, wir hatten eher Hürden am Start, weil it's more difficult to start because it wasn't so easy to get a bank uh, a bank account some banks were just answering after a year or something there were some online banks that had not non-working software and such problems but once you have an account it works quite well okay Okay. Genau, dann habe ich noch mal eine Frage, die geht auch so ein bisschen in die Then I have another question that goes in a similar direction. Ah, genau, du hast es ein bisschen erwähnt vorhin. You mentioned it a little bit. Do every, does everyone have to agree if everyone is equal? Or is the, the risk of group think well, it depends what your role is or what role the question is targeting. Structural change. There are laws for co-ops and that says if you want to change the structure, you need a three-quarter majority. But if you just want to do your business or your project, and that within the co-op, then of course you don't have to talk to everyone. You have your own working group, uh, working environment, and nobody else has to really agree with that. There is a small majority, so uh, I have to have the majority if something affects the whole co-op, but not your project. So, organizationally, there is the whole membership meeting, and that's for very basic things. But in between, management is responsible for the day-to-day -day business. So, management has to decide what happens. But they don't do that alone. We have this construction with the core team. We have this round table where everything is discussed. So theoretically, management could be seen as a well-meaning dictator. Okay. Then I have a question about the competences. So my employer sometimes looks for freelancers for his teams. How am I contacting you? Can you help? Yeah, definitely. We have such questions quite often and we can just mirror them to our members unless the inventory already answers it directly. So the address for that is always the office at address office at wtf-eg.de. So this question fits quite well. Have you collected experiences? So how are teams set up? How are you setting up a competence cluster for a project? Well, the process is basically quite simple. We have our internal forum on Discord where everyone can discuss. And for some categories, there are pitches and then people say, yeah, I like that as well. Or we could it like this, I could do it like this. And then we have a discussion. And then it goes to the working group business cases and we create a business case. The team usually finds itself beforehand, but some support things we try to keep the bus factor. So if someone sells like a service contract for server um, uh, um, for server service or servicing, then it needs more people, of course, at least two. 
sozusagen quasi aus Gesprächen raus entstanden sind. Und das some stuff happens after a discussion and one or two just start the thing and then it's usually the case that others find themselves who help. So as soon as you have something working, something for demonstrations, then others just come and have other ideas and help. At a few spots, it's either us or a few others that had an idea and just said, yeah, we're doing that. And then the others just arrived. That fits the next question. What are the most, most common business cases that you migrated into the core? Well, the business cases are mostly technologically motivated. One where a whole company was migrated was completely different. It was about facility management topics. But usually it's about technological things. I have servicing of mail service or I have this customer or someone, a friend where I helped with domain hosting and others, but I want to formalize that and maybe hand it over to someone else. So this is topics where the co-op is really helpful. It's usually IT topics because it's a hacker co-op. Yeah, so smaller software development projects that wants to have the accounting done by the co-op. We have hardware development in the co-op. I think a lot of administrative jobs are done by the co-op, things like that. And of course, people who say, I have these tax things, do it by, in, via the co-op and they scan everything and do the bookkeeping properly. So that's another topic that we handle. Yeah, a lot of questions were about that. How are you, how is the financing? Are there fees? for members who just want to use the tax service, use it as a tax service, basically. How does that work? Well, we have to differentiate between the invoice as a service, there's the entropy fee. So just like a payment service, there's a flat fee and others office as a service or also the mail service. That's a product topic. There is a fee per letter or mail item. And if you have a business case, then with a flat fee, you are basically done. Then, of course, there is a membership fee that's yearly. In the first year, that is has to be paid and probably this year as well. And hopefully at some point we don't need that anymore, but right now it exists. Okay, so there's a lot of questions in that direction. A lot of were answered, I think, in the talk. One question I don't know. How are you doing with crowd supply or something like that? Does it mean anything to you? So crowd financing is a topic we are discussing a lot. Yeah, and we have to think about it. There are different prognoses. We have one member who specializes on these issues. So it's not a problem in general, but what I didn't know, it's not an easy issue, crowdfunding, but we could do that our projects that hand, uh, do it, we could handle that. And we have a member in our management who is an expert. So yeah, direct contact would be best. Could, uh, could donations be collected using the co-op? Yes, but not as official donations. And the co-op is of course a business and has to pay taxes. And we are not, so we have sales tax. And of course, we are not for the public good. Uh, we are not non-profit, so we can't have that. Do you want to get engaged in open source? So 
Do you want to set up a fund or help with that? Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. Yes, of course. Yeah, please continue. Well, I would say, on the one hand, open source is brought in with the members because they are, they like volunteering and it should be open source then. At this point, where we say we don't need money, yes, but our capital, so not it's not just money, it's our, our funding is also in people, in skills, and people who can set up a next cloud or OTS, drone, all, whatever they are called, Jitsi, all of those. And if you take something from the pool, you want to give something back, that's the idea. So participate instead of just replace. And can, I, can you also handle Bitcoin? Or can I maybe have payment via crypto? That is actually a topic about the payment integration. And the answer is usually it depends, but we have to talk about it because many people want to do that, want to do crypto in some form or another. And we have to check if we can actually do that. Okay. Can we have the membership fee as as can I handle it in another organization? We have to see. That's a very specific question. So what's the email address? If I want to know more, do you have a public forum, especially 101? So we have a small Q&A session, but is there something that we can use, some public manual? Is there something linked? Yeah, there is the Tele beer or Mate. So it's a big blue button room at wtfeg.de slash bbb. And that's an onboarding meeting. And then, of course, there are the mumbles and so on. Yeah, I think a lot of detailed questions would really fit in there. There was one very interesting one. I have to scroll down because it gets more and more. So awareness and equality, how do you handle that? We have one member who handles that. She is part of management, no, uh, of the supervision board. But of course, the environment where you get to know each other, that's on our agenda. agenda. And so far, we didn't have any problems, if you can say it like that. So there is apparently a 404 in the website for the train ticket. Yeah, the, the, the promotion ended. Okay, maybe a question that's nice as a finisher. So will there be a WTF camp, a co-op camp in 2022? We hope so, that it will be there in some form. And you will know if you either check the website on a regular basis or come to a meeting, Telebier or Telemate. And we are creating a newsletter for non-members, but it doesn't exist yet. So visit the website, the podcast, everything is there. There's a blog post, uh, there are blog posts, all of that. Okay, I got a good question now. Did you, what were the projects you didn't want to do? Is there a vote? 
of, by the member. Maybe something about fake news, propaganda. So, yeah, we ha want to develop something concrete, but we want to say no crime, no politics, no sex. That's the rule of thumb that we use right now. So you said there are talks for new members, something like an interview. Okay. Yeah. There we check, what do you want to do? How can we do that? And we had to say no to some things. We had to refuse. And I feel sorry for people who had a lot of work with that, but that happens. And if something is very risk heavy, and when the management then says, hmm, that might be dangerous, then the supervisory board gets included. So we have a lot of eyes on the business cases. Okay, great. And I get a four of four now. So I think a lot of thank yous come in now, and I would say that's a good end point. Telemart sounds like a great way to meet. And then we can talk about all the details, finances, taxes, and so on. Thanks again for your talk. It was fun. I'm happy about all the questions. Nice development based on the Hacker Corp from back when. And see you soon on the next talk. Yeah, thank you again. If you want to say something, now's the time. Thank you very, very much to all those people who made it possible by their volunteer work. Thanks to the admins, to all the website, office, all the work that has been done by volunteers. <laughs> and next year, everything will be better. Doing is everything. And thank you. Thank you also for your attention from your translators. 